Have you ever done something for 500 days in a row, not missing a single day? Let me tell you my story. I am a nerd about computer programming, comic books, film, technology, and I love poetry. You know, poetry is the most intense use of language you can ever find. Everything is potentially meaningful. But I'm particularly passionate about e-poetry, where all those interests come together. What is e-poetry? is poetry in digital media. And my story is about discovering this digital media poetry, and it's what I want to share with you. About four years ago, I started this project called I Love E Poetry. And I set myself the challenge, it was a blog, I set myself the challenge that I would read an e-poem every day, and I would write about it critically with my training, I'm a doctor in this, uh, every day, at least 100 words. It quickly abandoned that, wrote about 250. And there was a world of e-literature to be discovered. I started with the Electronic Literature Collection, Volume 1, published in 2006 by the Electronic Literature Organization. I read all the poetry there, wrote about it, one per day. Went on to Electronic Literature Collection, Volume 2. All the poetry. That was published in 2011. I went to old e-zines, like Poems That Go, that between 1999 and 2003 published that e-poetry that was emerging at the time. I looked at exhibitions, such as the collection put together uh, for the ELO 2012 Media Art Show by Dina Gregor. I looked at contemporary competitions, uh, like the New Media Writing Prize out of England, read all the poetry there, wrote about it. I went into websites, like Jim Andrews' website, Vispo. Uh, I wrote my dissertation on his work, and I read the poetry and I wrote about it. I even discovered along the way genres I was barely aware of, like the bot, these wonderful little machines that run autonomously in social media. They publish their wacky creations on Twitter and other uh, social media networks. And all that went into I Love E Poetry. And after 500 days, not missing a single day, I had put together a little bit of an encyclopedic resource, uh, I Love E Poetry. Uh, it covers 31 years of the tradition and the tradition is even older than that. Uh, over 20 publications that I covered, over 100 different digital technologies that were used in the creation of this e-poetry, and over 264 authors. After that, I took a little break from the daily writing. 500 days in a row was whew, <laughs> rigorous. But then I took a step back into a more editorial role, and I invited other people to share their expertise in e-literature e in general and the poetics of digital media. But what is e-poetry? Well, let me share an example with you. I think it's the best way to, for you to really understand what I'm talking about. Here's a poem by Jim Andrews called Seattle Drift. Let's read it together. Seattle Drift. I'm a bad text. I used to be a poem, but drifted from the scene. Do me. I just want you to do me. <laughs> and you notice, <laughs> you notice uh, the menu up top says, do the text, stop the text, discipline the text. <laughs> All right, let's do the text. Huh? Let's see what happens. So here we go. It starts to drift. Okay, we can stop it. Now we can read it. Text, I'm Seattle Drift. Poem, you want to, to bad, from, be, oh, let's drift it again. Text, I, I'm, we could read it in movement. Uh, stop it. Text, I, I'm, want, want to. Text, I want you to. Drift, poem, text, 
want you. Text, text. Notice that the poem continues to drift. It creates an ever-expanding field with clusters of words. Want you to, I, I'm, drift. Text, me, bad, but used, do. <laughs> Notice, we can't do this on a piece of paper, right? We can't do this on a page. And if we go back and we discipline the text, ah, okay. Whoopsh, back to where we're used to having texts on the page, that left-hand margin, in lines, you know, poetry, right? E-poetry, when we discipline it, returns to the scene of poetry that we're used to, the page, the static text. But this poem doesn't want that, does it? Maybe that's why it's bad. <laughs> what we're talking about here, and I've been mentioning the difference between print and digital spaces, right? Because we've, we've been doing print for a couple centuries, right? Uh, we're pretty used to it. But when we describe print text, we use a different vocabulary than when we describe digital text. Well, similar, there's overlap. So we can look at a print text and see what it says, right? What it sounds like, what's the syntax, what's the meaning. We can describe what it looks like, uh, the font, the formatting, all that visual information, cut into lines, stuff like that. And with digital text, we can do the same. We can see what they say, we can see what they look like, right? That we can talk about meaning and appearance, but we can also describe what these texts do and under what conditions? We could call that behavior. And if PowerPoint has taught us anything about simple, simple animations is that anyone can add behavior to a digital text. You see, print is WYSIWYG, which means that what you see is what you get, right? It's there. Digital media, well, you have the screen text, right? And you can add all sorts of multimedia, right? Like, like images, you can add that to the page, but audio, hmm, not so easy. Video, definitely not, right? And code is part of what makes all this come together. It's part of what makes it work. So let's take a look at the code of Seattle Drift. Normally, with any kind of digital text, if you right-click, you can take a peek at a little menu that says view source code, right? These are the instructions that tell the browser what to show on the screen. We take a look, and it's too small to read, but notice the green text is documentation. These are comments that the programmer, poet, Jim Andrews wrote there for people who go look at the code. We can see some blue keywords, and black is basically the, the program. And we can see functions. There's a function here called move it. And you can see that each word has its own set of instructions. And by analyzing those, we can see why they're clustered in certain ways. There's even a little essay under the surface of Seattle Drift in which Jim Andrews talks a little bit about what he's doing and why he's doing it. These textual behaviors, we're used to static. That's what ink does when you put it on paper. You put ink on paper and it will stay there for centuries, even thousands of years, if you preserve those materials well. But digital texts can do many other things. Rather than go through the list, let me show you some examples. So here we have a hypertext, my body. Hypertext is what we're most used to on the web. Uh, you have links, you have images, you have static text, and it, the links are responsive text. You click on it, and it does something. We can have kinetic text. And here, this animation, right, this poem argument, yes, no, yes, no, is a kinetic scheduled text operating on a loop. We can see other kinds of behaviors, such as in family tree. When you click on it, you seem to have this sort of static, kinetic text, right? But notice that pointer, and notice what happens as you scroll down, as you move the pointer, it starts to affect the swing of this family tree. 
You see, that pointer is your symbolic presence in the text. And the text is reading you as you are reading it. So you become part of the performance. To take it a step further, Jason Nelson took the idea of the platformer game and combined it, used it as a surface for writing poetry. Game, 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 and again, game. I muted the audio, but it is, combines all of these things, and you have to play through 13 levels, and your interactions are meaningful. Obviously, this is a quick screen capture, so you can have an idea, but each level explores an idea. Here we have Taroko Gorge. This is an amazing work because you have this text that is slowly flowing on a schedule down the screen. Now, it is a nature poem about this canyon in, in, in Taiwan, right, that Nick Monfort visited and was inspired to write this poem. But if we look at the source code, wait a second, this poem is generated. If you try to read it on the surface, it goes on forever. And that source code, other people, like Scott Redberg, remixed it and made it about Tokyo. J.R. Carpenter remixed it, changed the words, and made it about eating. Here we have the poem still flowing down the screen. Kathy Enman Behrens made it about cooking, about Julia Child, about programming. Darius Kasemi, a famous bot maker, made it about clubs in Hey Gorgeous. And as we can see, all of these texts, right, what we see is the emergence of a new native epoetic form. Basically, this is like the sonnet. It is a form that people can repurpose and do wonderful things with. So what are the benefits of reading electronic literature? We can see literary traditions continue and adapt to digital media. We can discover some emergent e-literary genres, and you've seen a few. We can learn advanced literacy. Learning how to read and write on the page is no longer enough. We need to learn how to write on these spaces, these computers. So we learn about digital media. We learn about writing and producing text that incorporate different modes, video, audio, images. We learn about textual behavior. And we learn code. We learn code literacy. Code is what makes language go in these spaces. So I urge you to discover electronic literature. There are a ton of resources out there. You've seen the collections. You've had a taste of I Love E Poetry. There are a ton of resources out there. Go and explore. Learn the native digital poetry and the native literature that emerges in these spaces. And I'd say, go write electronic literature, but what if I told you you're already doing it? <laughs> when you create memes, you're writing on images instead of writing on the blank page, right? I mean, you're creating GIFs, you're creating all kinds of wonderful things. This is the testing ground of this basic, no, advanced literacy. Play with your digital toys, and you will learn, and you will see that you can not only change the world, but you can also dare to change the word. Thank you very much. <laughs>